Welcome, Holy Spirit. You're our most important guest. We surrender this platform to you. Let people see, hear, and experience things they've only dreamt about in the past. In Yeshua's name, amen. I'm here with Jody Keck. And Jody, um, I talked to her on the phone because she's the co-author with Tommy Welchel, who is the last living link with the Azusa Street Revival. He literally sat as a young kid at the, their feet, and they were instructed to tell all the stories. So he heard the firsthand stories of the miracles. So I felt I'm going to interview him. So I get on the phone, and I call Jody up, and I say, Jody, I'm ready to interview Tommy. And Jody said, Well, Sid, Tommy is now in heaven as of this morning. Can you He's imagine? Gone. But here's what happened. Jody, just like Tommy, heard all the stories that Tommy had heard from Tommy. And as a result, she was able to write the book. But what really, really excited me, and you didn't tell me this, and the publishers didn't tell me this, but I could see it. Uh, I, I happen to be a citizen of Israel and the United States. I happen to go to Israel at least every year for either evangelistic meetings or tours or, or, or visiting my relatives. I read your book. And I, I'm going to make a statement of fact. Everyone, everyone that's never been to Israel must read this book. Everyone that's going to go to Israel must read this book. And everyone that has been in Israel must read this book. This is better than the best tour guide I ever saw because it's completely scripture, Jody. I have to ask you a personal question. You, I, I have to believe you've fallen in love with the Jewish people in the land of Israel. Am I right? It's yeah. picked, I pick it up when I read through your book. Absolutely. Love Israel, have had a heart for Israel for many years, have been several times, and like you, my heart is to go every year love the nation, love the Jewish people, love all the people over there. As a matter of fact, I'm on a board of a ministry in Israel that I serve with. The book is called The River of Zion. I can't wait for you to read these prophecies that Tommy Welchel had in Israel about the end times. I think there's a whole cheering squad in heaven rooting for you to be part of this. The miracles that happened at Azusa Street will do nothing but stretch your faith. Um, and you'll develop a heart for Israel, all based on the Bible when you read this book. And let's face it, Israel is going to be where all the end time prophecy happens. It was where all the beginning prophecy happened. And that is the center of the universe. The name of the book that uh, will we'll make the ebook available so I can get it in your hands immediately is The River of Zion. And all you do is go to sidroth.org forward slash Jody, J O D Y, S I D R O T H dot O R G forward slash J O D Y. When you told me Tommy had died, I had just started into the book and I was so disappointed because in this book, they tell miracles that Tommy has never spoken publicly before. Give me an example. Give me one miracle that no one has ever heard before from Tommy. One of the miracles that he shared that we were able to put in the book was there was this man that had come into the Azusa Street Mission one night and there was one of the old saints that told the story to him was Brother Brown. And he told him that the man had had a stroke. 
The entire left side of his body was paralyzed. He was on a crutch. He, the only thing that worked on the entire left side of his body was his left eye he could see out of a little and his left nostril. That was it. Everything else was totally paralyzed. So he drug himself to the mission and Brother Brown prayed for him. He said that as he began to pray, he could hear bones cracking and popping. And all of a sudden, the man's leg straightened up, the man straightened up, he let go of the crutch, and God had instantly healed that man of the stroke. Later, that man came to Pisgah, the community where Tommy lived with these old saints, and Tommy actually got to meet him. And he asked him, he said, what did you do with your life after yeah. your miracle? And he told him he had become a minister and that he had shared the gospel all over. Now, I don't know why it is, but there is a miracle that Tommy has previously shared that <clears throat> just fascinated me. There was evidently someone, one of the elderly women, that had a ministry for teeth. And th this person had, th this is how I remember it, rotten teeth. Yes. And when they were prayed for, you tell that story. Okay, so that was Sister Lucille. And she loved praying for people with teeth issues. God used her greatly. She said that she would go to the mission almost every night, and every night that she was there, she would pray for two or three different people with teeth issues, and they would all be healed. One night, this young girl came in, and she had gotten all of her permanent teeth in, but when they'd grown in, they were all decayed and rotten, oh. every one of her teeth. So her parents had brought her in, and so Sister Lucille went to her, and she said, bring me a cup. They brought her a cup and the little girl bent over and when she bent over the cup, every one of her teeth fell out. Every one of those rotten teeth fell out into that cup. That must have been a little scary. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> yes. she said that the, the little girl was just, of course, amazed. And then what Lucille did is incredible. She took her finger and she would put her finger on one spot and wait for that tooth, the new tooth to grow in. And then she would move to the next one and it would grow in. And she went through every tooth in that little girl's mouth and prayed one by one until every tooth grew back into her mouth. Are you saying instantly grew back? Instantly, instantly. Can you, this is what television, this is what social media is created for. It's not created for the junk that we have on, and that's what it is, junk, not profitable in any way, shape, or form outside of Christian television. It was created to capture the miracles happening in the moment it happens, not Jody telling a story. It's when it's happening. What would happen if a non-believer saw that particular miracle, and you told me this woman had such an anointing for this, that this was kind of a common miracle that she had the faith for. Every night that she was there, she had the faith for it, and she said God healed every person that came in there that she prayed for. What would happen if a non-believer saw a miracle like that? You have to understand, when Jewish people came to believe in Jesus, the thing that attracted them was not the love of God in Jesus. The thing that attracted them was not the best teaching in the planet or outside of the planet. The thing that attracted them caused them to walk miles in the desert, caused them to go without food, was the miracles. And my experience has been, Jody, when I speak to a people like my people, I'm Jewish, who haven't had Christians in our ancestry uh, in 2,000 years. You are not going to convince a Jewish person, a Muslim person, a Hindu in Jesus. But what I have found is one miracle grabs the undivided attention of the non-believer 
And it's almost like it explains in the Bible the spiritual scales over our eyes. Well, the spiritual scales over the eyes of non-believers. We have a whole generation trained to be skeptics of God, trained to be skeptics of the Bible. And you're going to reach them through apologetics and say, well, Isaiah 53 speaks of Jesus. It was written 800 years before Jesus came. They'll say, that's interesting. And then they'll say, "Uh, let's go out and eat. You know, it's like it'll go in one ear and out the other. But a miracle grabs the attention, and this is what I have found. Once I have the attention, the undivided attention, and I proclaim the good news, it goes right into the Spirit. And that's the purpose of a miracle. The purpose of a miracle is not to entertain you. The purpose of a miracle is to shout from the rooftops, there is a God in heaven. He is personal. And he just showed up and did this miracle. That's the purpose of a miracle. Now, you provoke me to jealousy, Jody, because the last link to the Azusa Street Revival, Tommy Welchel, prayed an impartation of the same anointing that was at Azusa Street on you. But even before that, you had a presence of God come on you with a former guest that's been on our program. Her name, Joan Giesen. And Joan had the glory of Catherine Coleman come upon her. I just got this picture of Catherine Coleman with the glory on her, and it had to be on her like that to have the miracles I witnessed before my very eyes. And I'll tell you something else. When she interviewed me, or I interviewed people that she prayed for that had, like Joan Giesen, 30 years later, The miracles are still there. They didn't come and then they they lost their healing. That wasn't even, because look at that glory that is on Catherine Coleman. I just showed that picture to you. Yes. I've seen that before. William Branham had almost like a halo over, over his head. So Jody, tell me about how you happened to meet Joan Giesen and because she definitely had the anointing on Catherine Coleman on her. Tell me how how you met her and what happened when she prayed for you. Truly an encounter with the Lord like I've never had, such a supernatural encounter that it was meant to be. It was destiny. Many years ago, I was in a meeting. Uh, I just want to point something out to you right now. The glory of God. The minute she started talking about this, the glory of God intensified in this studio, which means God is ready to do something for you. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I I was in a meeting and the Lord gave me a vision. I was in a meeting where Joan Giesen was and I wasn't talking with her or anything like that. But in this vision, she came up to me and she put her hands on my face, just like this, and she said, you're the one. Well, life went on and I was a young woman and I sort of shelved it knowing that God would bring it to fruition Mm -hmm. in his timing. So fast forward many years. I mean, how'd you like a word like that? You're the one. Yeah, (laughs) right? So I had a dream and in my dream, I'm at this healing crusade and I'm on the second row of seats, and there's an older lady on the stage, and she looks at me right before she starts, and she comes down, and she sits on my right side, and she takes my right hand, and we held hands, and we lift them up together. And immediately, we were both whisked up into this realm of glory and into a heavenly realm that in my dream, the presence of the Lord was incredible. The glory of God was so amazing. And the Lord just began talking to us and revealing these things. Well, then in the dream, immediately we're back in the green room. And I looked at her and I said, how do I get this 
anointing. How, how do I walk in this? And all she said, Sid, she said, I'm 80 years old. And I woke up. Fast forward just a few months, and I had a pastor who's a friend of mine. He called me and he said, Jody, I know that God has used you in the healing ministry, but I know that he wants to do something new and even more. So you need to just start reading more, watching more, just truly filling your spirit with whatever you can about healing and miracles. And so that was on a Friday. Saturday morning, I just happened to turn on this show called It's Supernatural <laughs> with Sid Roth. And I'm in my kitchen and I thought, where better to start than with with Sid and, and the people that he has on his show. As I was sitting there, there was a lady that came right here and it was the lady that was in my dream. Hmm. When I saw her, I said, oh God, that is the woman that I dreamt about. What are you saying here to me? Immediately, he then showed me and reminded me of the vision that he had given me all those years ago, back in the mid 90s, he'd given me this vision where Joan came and said, you're the one. The presence of the Lord filled that room so greatly. I fell to my knees and just began to worship and say, I'm not sure what you're doing, but I'm all in. I surrender afresh and I'm all in. But your eyes are tearing up, why? Because I feel the presence of the Lord so strong. <laughs> because he's here and he's, he's in this and he wants people to know this because there are many more out there that will watch this that he wants to touch that need an encounter with him. And by the way, I'm gonna have her pray for you in a moment. So I thought, I didn't know when the show had aired. I thought, is she still even alive? And so of course I Google and she's still alive. And I Google uh, even deeper and how old is she? She's 80 years old. Hmm. Just like she told me in her dream, I'm wow. 80 years old. Uh, you have very precise dreams, I understand, in I general. Do. Extremely very specific dreams that, they got, that God gives me, very specific dreams sometimes. And I'm grateful for that. I think it's a time when we dream that we can just shut out our minds and shut out everything. I think God can speak so clearly to us through dreams if we're willing to listen. Well, I found this number online and I called this phone number and her husband answers the phone, Frank answers the phone and he said, I'm not even sure why I answered my cell phone. I never answer, answer if I don't know who it is. Right. Well, I knew again, God is orchestrating this. So I ended up talking with Joan and I asked her, do you witness this in your spirit? I told her about the dream. She said, oh, Jody, I do. And you know, she's just so sweet and gentle. And she just said, oh, Jody, I do. She said, I wanna tell you the first thing I wanted to tell you to mentor you is keep it simple. Keep it simple. The gospel is so simple. His miracles are so simple. They're so, it's when you walk in them, keep it simple. Well, fast forward again, I ended up, she said, come to St. Louis and meet me. I went to St. Louis, I took my son-in-law and so he could video and she had agreed to that, she wanted that. We go to St. Louis, we spend four hours with her while we were there, and I sent you this video, it was just a, a short clip out of the four hours where Miss Joan had prayed over me. And what she prayed for truly changed my life. She began to pray over me and pray for that same impartation of the glory that she had received through Catherine Kuhlman. You see, she traveled and, and she uh, ministered with Catherine for eight and a half years. And then later went on to minister with Benny Hinn for 14 years. So she had been involved with thousands of miracles. And she prayed that what God would do for me would be even more than what he had given her. And then she began to rub my hands and say, anything that your hands touch will be blessed and there will be a multiplication on them. I've now seen some of those miracles. She said, as you pay, pray for people, it's gonna be immediate and they're gonna bounce out of those wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. And um, I was able to pray for a lady 
last year that did bounce out of one of those wheelchairs. And I was able to pray for some people in our prayer group one night. The faith just rose up in me. And I said, let's all believe God for our finances. We put our checkbooks in a basket. Everybody had faith for it. I said, I know God wants to multiply for His kingdom purposes. And we prayed over that. And within two days, the miracles started. And every person that had the faith to put those checkbooks and those wallets in the basket, the miracles started. Just before you pray for our audience, I want you to briefly tell me when Tommy Welchel, the oldest living link who is now in heaven, <laughs> of the Azusa Street Revival. The saints felt God said, you must tell these stories to this young man because he then will tell others. And he laid hands on you for the Azusa Street Revival. Tell me about, did he prophesy at all over you? He did. What did he say? He prayed for me several times for that impartation. He knew that I had such a hunger and a heart for revival and to see the Lord bring those miracles like he did at revival. It was a time that that fire from the upper room came to that fire at, at Azusa. And when Tommy prayed for me, again, the glory of God was so strong, but he knew that obviously he was getting older and he was ready to pass that torch. And he told me, he said, you're the one. God has told me you're the one. You're the one that took me to Israel. You're the one that's supposed to continue to share these stories of the miracles. He's entrusted that to you. And so he laid hands on me and he imparted exactly because every time those old saints would tell him the stories, they would lay their hands on his shoulders and ask for their anointing and that impartation for him. So you picked it all up. <laughs> I guess. I, I mean, l listen, from Catherine Coleman, to the Azusa Street Revival. And in a matter of a few years, they took the gospel all over the world. It was the most phenomenal thing in a short period of time. But there are people, and I want you to look in the camera straight ahead, and I want you to say, you are the one, and pray for that person. Father, oh God, you know, like no other, the ones that are out there, the burning ones, the ones that you have called to carry your glory. And I, now I speak and I pray for that impartation and I speak, you're the one. You're the one that God has chosen. You're the one that has a destiny and a purpose to fulfill. You're the one to carry his glory to every part of the earth. I thank you, God, that you are releasing angels right now to go before every person watching, every person listening. I pray the glory of you fills their rooms, their cars, anywhere that they are, Father God. I pray, Lord Jesus, right now that you make yourself known as never before to your people. And I speak and I prophesy in the name of Jesus that you are the one. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. If you were hungry and you were agreeing in that prayer, you are the one. Some of you felt something. Some of you didn't feel anything. You're not moved by what you feel. You're moved only by the word of the living God. And I believe she spoke the word of the living God over you. You are the one. And I want you to begin laying hands on the sick and watching them recover. Forget what's happened in the past. You have the creator of the universe inside of you, whether you feel it or not. And you've always had that power since you said that prayer of making Jesus your Messiah and Lord. In fact, I want everyone to reaffirm their faith and those that don't know the Messiah say this for the first time. And the Messiah who's always been outside of you trying to get you to recognize who he is. He wants to live inside of you. He wants you to experience his presence. He wants to use your hands, your eyes, your mouth, your nose, your ears. Say this prayer with me out loud. 
and mean it to the best of your ability. You've tried it without him on the inside. You've tried it without having your own experience with him. Let's do it the way the Bible says to do it, for him to live inside of you. Repeat out loud, dear God, out loud, dear God, I'm so sorry. I've committed many sins. I believe that your blood, your precious blood, washed away all those sins. And I am clean. They no longer exist. You have erased them from my book of life. They no longer are there. I'm clean. And now that I am clean, I want to be your temple. Jesus, come and live inside of me. I make you my savior. I'm forgiven. It's a new start. And now I make you my Lord. I want an experience with you that the world can never take away. In Jesus' name, amen. Shalom, shalom.